Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad here this morning coming to you from downtown or suburbs of Southport all the way out here in uh, Studio B. Got a special guest here, but first, let's take care of our weather. Brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, and, and they'll get your job done if you need it. Okay, we're looking at a high today of 81, low of 60. The next four or five days, it looks that way. We've got this little front coming through for the weekend. Not going to be much rain. Now, we've got about 30 40% next day or two, but the weekend really shaping up good. I don't have the water temperature. I don't know if the, the buoy fell out or what, but we don't have the water temperature this morning. But we do have the river readings brought to us by Mountain Dew. The Appalachia of Blunstown is at an 8.6, and it's looking good. And the Choctatch at Caraville, 5.8. Both rivers are shaping up for a really good weekend of, of fishing and getting on those sandbars and enjoying yourself. Our tie chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn on 23rd Street. We're looking at neap tides. Not much going on, but we talked about it yesterday. The weekend is going to be some good, strong tides. There's some exciting times on East Bay and West Bay, and Choctahatchee Bay is going to look good. Not to mention Apalachicola Bay, all in our viewing area. I uh, amaze myself sometimes looking at our geographical location that we live in. It's just uh, really cool. The wind's going to be coming out of the east, southeast at about 9. And don't forget, the full moon is tonight. So just take time out to go outside on the back porch or wherever you, uh, front yard or wherever, and just take a few moments and just look at that full moon. It's going to be beautiful as it's coming up. Let's take a break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, and welcome to a familiar face here on Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning. Ken Good morning. How welcome are you? back to the show. Good to see you. Glad to have you. Glad been, to be back. <laughs> want to say glad to be back. He's just been traveling all over the place doing outdoor stuff. Jeff and I have been stuck here doing Panhandle Outdoors, and Ken, he was part of Panhandle Outdoors team. He's way out west, and every time I turn around, I'm seeing him somewhere. Went to Mexico. Mexico. So. All right, I said, hey, time out. Just take time out, and when you get back home, come on the show and tell, share with the folks. What all you been doing and what's coming up? With, uh, you you still you staying busy than you've ever been, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> and I uh, actually just got off the plane yesterday from South Dakota. <laughs> so uh, all right, so what have you what have you been up to? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I've been to a retirement party of a very good friend of mine, and uh, we went down to Stewart actually for yeah. for three or four days a week or so ago, and then uh, I just got back from South Dakota, went to a ranch. Uh, Bucket list things, you know, you got to keep mm -hmm. checking them off. Yeah. And uh, we were pheasant hunting out there. And actually, we were fortunate enough to uh, be there on opening day. Saturday was opening, last Saturday was opening day of pheasant. And having having never been there and not knowing, I mean, I knew, always knew that pheasant hunting was popular there. Mm -hmm. But until you get there and see the frenzy, um, the Cabela's out there is just, you know, all, all pheasant hunting related stuff. Mm -hmm. The hotels are like ours for snapper season. They're all full. The restaurants are full. They're all pheasant hunters. The ones we talked to that were in our party that we didn't know, but they're at the same ranch they're from all over the United States. Uh, and they come in just for those pheasants. Wow, I've, I've heard and about it. Everybody just had a grand time. It, it, it was something to see and just to see. Um, I'm assuming it's really a boon to their economy, mm -hmm. obviously there, but, and where we were at is a town called Pierre. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Pierre, <laughs> but you get corrected or <laughs> when you hear the locals, it's Pier, like Pier Park. Okay. But it's P-I-E, R R E. Yeah, so we would school, all say we learned it Pierre, Pierre, but <laughs> they say Pierre. Pierre, okay. They, all something. the locals say Pierre. Well, actually, Pierre is the state capital mm -hmm. of South Dakota, and we went and saw the Capitol building. That's where Christy Nome is, the uh, governor okay. of South Dakota. So you wouldn't think the Capitol would be in that little. It's a small town, but that's where the capital of the state is. So mm -hmm. that was just down the road from the hotel, and. The airport is just a little hub, you know, where they get you from Denver to Pier. Okay. And uh, so then we went to this ranch, 
The ranch is called the Core Cow. It's spelled K-O-R-K-O-W. That's the last name of the three brothers that own it. Okay. The Core Cow Ranch. And their claim to fame is because not only do they have thousands, of, literally thousands of acres, they are a ranch, a working ranch that supplies bucking horses and bulls to rodeos throughout the country. And I guess they contract with promoters mm -hmm. of rodeos for livestock. And then they haul the livestock to the rodeos and then the cowboys compete at the rodeos on their livestock that they provided. Now you're showing me some pictures. This one picture here of this horse that you were talking about, this, this horse was special. This yeah, this horse, um, the owner one afternoon after we got in from our hunt wanted to give us a little tour of his ranch, which is vast. And it's, it's kind of on the edge of what they call the Black Hills mm -hmm. of South Dakota. And so he drives us around in a truck and he drove up on these bunch of horses and uh, beautiful horses. But this one horse, is, his name was Onion Ring, <laughs> and uh, he was a uh, national champion bucking horse, mm -hmm. and he was beautiful. He was, he was, he, I, I thought they were, when you're in a, at a rodeo, you know, the horses down there, they look kind of, they don't look small, but mm -hmm. you don't really um, relate to them until you're standing next to one. But somebody casually asked the owner about what that horse was worth, and he said, I could probably get $50,000 for him. Mm, that's a strong horse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he was very proud. They are very proud of their horse, of this horse that co competed all over the country, I guess, this past summer. Mm -hmm. And however they, they declare it, he was a world champion. Wow. So that was, how, many, that was, how many people, how many cowboys that buck off, they probably get points um, or something for and, I guess. And, I yeah, and, and the cowboys win money if they yeah. do stay on them, you yeah. know, and all that. But and, and they had the bulls too. But mm -hmm. they truck those, they truck that livestock all over the country. Did Could, you, they go down to K K Kissimmee here in Florida. Kissimmee cowboys. Yeah. Okay. What about? Okay. So, did you have, when you lined this trip up? Did you just how'd you line it up? Did you have? Long story short, a friend of mine I haven't seen in thirty years, so it was a reunion that I used to work with in South Florida, wanted to get together and do something recreationally, either elk hunting, hunting out west of some sort. So we talked and he decided that he'd like to go pheasant hunting. Mm. So he got, a, he got a group of four, himself and I, because the ranch wanted at least six in a group. And so he got on, he saw it on some hunting videos, the ranch, he contacted them, he reserved the, the spots, and it was a two-day hunt. We only hunted Saturday and Sunday, which was opening weekend. I wish we'd have done three, but two was, you're pretty wore out. Yeah, yeah. A lot of walking, um, and we killed we killed quite a few birds in the group, but the, they add other groups to your your group, so okay. you may go out to the field with 30 okay. or 40, and they, have, they had like three buses, because okay. it's so vast. And okay, you, and now is it very similar to our quail hunting in a way, or is, I mean, the dogs it's, are it's, they pointing or the flushing? Yes, they use dogs and they do point and they do flush, but the area is, is so vast that it's almost like you would picture a deer drive. Okay. Where you would line up on a field, straight lines, and put some wingmen, they call them blockers, out to the side, and then the, the, the guides with the dogs are in the center and you slowly start working this field. Now the field's not like a cow pasture where there's, it's, you know, cut, sometimes cut corns, okay. sunflowers, um, food plot material that's, you know, like, so you can't see the birds, but you, you push, and then you have guys on the end, and so as the push goes, you know, the birds would rather run than fly. Okay. But when they get the people or dogs so close to them, up they come, and then it's up to the wherever the bird happens to come your way or the blocker's way or the the guys on the end, and somebody gets a shot. Oh man, that sounds exciting. Okay, it let's was. take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. See, we're Ken Parable. We're just getting back from South Dakota on one of the trips. I have a bucket list to go on, and we're talking about. And one of the things I always love about the quail hunt, dove hunt. 
they're working with those dogs, and I guess they do the same thing out there, don't they? Yeah, and they have they had you know the spaniels and the, the German short haired pointers, mm -hmm. and uh, had some retrievers, and of course each group took, and those dogs know when those hunters get on. They had little miniature school buses. They were actually school buses that they probably converted, not the big long ones like mm -hmm. we have, but those short ones. And that's what they take you to the fields in, along with, with some pickup trucks. But those dogs, when you get on that bus, here they come, and they just, they get right in the bus with you. Well, <laughs> the first day, they, they put me in the back seat of a truck to follow the bus. And when I got to the truck, there was a dog in the back seat already. So I opened my door and sat down and had my shotgun. It was empty. And this was, a, her name was Dakota. <laughs> And she was a German short hair. She came over, of course, it was cold the first morning we were there, probably 36, 38. And she came over and got against me and got in my lap and just stayed there. Oh, got an instant bond. Yep, <laughs> yep, until we got to the. That's a good picture there. Until we got to the field. Yeah. So she was a sweetheart. I, I, would, I could have brought her home with me, you know. <laughs> I love those German short hairs. They're yeah. good disposition. Yeah. Great disposition. Okay, so y'all out there shooting a couple of storms? Yeah, off, so. we shot, you know, all the guys brought their own guns, you know, from over and unders to, mm -hmm. I didn't want to, I didn't want to put a gun on an airplane and risk it not making it because my baggage didn't make it. So I went a day without, I'm glad I went a day early because the baggage got screwed up. Mm -hmm. But uh, my buddy brought a gun for me to use, which was just a Remington 1187, 12 mm -hmm. gauge, and it worked fine. Of course, I'm, I've never been a great wing shooter, so <laughs> I popped some caps at some that should have fell, but they didn't. But uh, <laughs> Overall, um, we harvested 63 birds uh, the second day and probably 35 to 40 the first day. Goodness gracious. And what they do, because you have such large groups, when people shoot birds, they just go in the back of the truck. If you want a bird to mount, then you set your bird aside and okay. they handle it that way. But you know, a pheasant is a pheasant is a pheasant. Wow. And now, I, I, I do know that I, I held one and my buddy shot one and there was a difference in size. And they even have little spurs on them like a turkey. Mm -hmm. And uh, this bird that I was holding was a two-year-old, he said, and this one was just probably, you know, the, the first years. And you could tell by the weight, the pretty uh, plumage, mm -hmm. and then of course the spur size. So. But if you wanted one to mount, you set it aside. If not, they went in the they went in the back of a truck, you know. And at the end of the day, because you have so many people, you have photo ops, you know. Okay. So we go to this location, and it's really a cool, you know. And you'll see the picture yeah. sh shortly. But the, this uh, where they stage where they put these birds, and you can get up there and pose with them. There's a big old sh a metal shotgun that they've they That's fabricated, cool. That's and. Cool. Uh, and so it's, that's where they put all the birds and then all the people who come and you can get a single photo op with all of them or the group or however you want to do it. So it's, it's really, it was well done. There's ranches all over the place mm -hmm. out there that offer that. Let me ask you this, did they might bring in the meat back home with them or how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was curious, I was curious about the meat. <laughs> that's a good question because I just did that yesterday. <laughs> okay. At the end of the, the second night, it was our last night, they say everybody that went on the hunt is going to go home with a bag limit. So if you shot two birds or one, and if you, if you figure we had 30 or 40 people and we ended up with 63 birds a second day, if it averages out one to two birds a person. Okay. Some people probably shot more, some people probably shot less, but it's the aggregate that, that they divide when you get in camp. Mm -hmm. So they say, um, you're going to go home with two days bag limit. Well, they'll bag, the daily bag limit is three birds. Okay. So I brought six birds home. Cool. Even though I probably didn't shoot six birds, but I shot some birds. So they're already cleaned. They're in a bag. So I'm on an airplane. The other guys had coolers and we're going home. I said, mm -hmm. well, what am I going to do? Well, the hotel had a deep freeze. So I, I put them in uh, Ziplocs. I put them in the freezer overnight, went down there at 4.30 in the morning, because my flight was leaving at 5.30. I took the, they're just the breasts. Okay. You know, yeah. the breasts, you have to leave one wing attached, or the head or a leg. And then, I froze them solid overnight, 
I wrapped them in newspaper, I put them in my baggage, and it was a 12-hour flight home, and I didn't know if my baggage would have got lost, uh, oh, there would have been some rotten chicken inside my baggage. <laughs> so they say frozen by the time and you got home? the time I got home, they were, just... they were solid enough to where they didn't change much. <laughs> That's I cool. put clothes all around them, <laughs> but, you know? Oh, I love that. It was crazy. Let's take a final break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's see, we're Ken Perriman. We're going to talk about, about cooking these uh, pheasants. But first, let's look at our fishing game times brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers. We're going to one time today, 1137 to 137, middle of the day. Now, we've got to talk turkey in a minute here locally, but let's finish up on the pheasants. Now, you, you got them home in the package and everything. So Yeah, they were, believe it or not, wrapping them in the newspaper, and then I put all my uh, the clothes that were in the bag around them to try to insulate, and I said, you know, if they're frozen solid, that hopefully they'll make it and not be. If, if they thawed out on the way home, I was just going to go ahead and cook them like today and tomorrow. Oh, yeah, all right. You know, but if they weren't, I was going to freeze them and then figure out so we asked some of the guys before we left, because I, I never had one, and uh, some said inject it, you know, before you put it in the oven with... Uh, Seasoning time? Yeah, that stuff like you'd inject a, tur right. a turkey. And so one guy said, just get some boxes of shake and bake, whatever, you know, because they have different kind of flavors, and just mm -hmm. shake and bake them. Well, I got to thinking, if they're anything like turkey breast, and I don't know, but they eat grain, yeah. you know, they don't eat fish and all that, well, I always fry turkey breast, mm -hmm. and a lot of times we brine turkey breast in pickle juice, mm -hmm. and then bread it and fry it. So I'm probably going to try it a couple of different ways because I've got six, you know, six breasts. Okay. So I don't know yet, but there's different ways, and I've heard also the opposite that they weren't that great. So nah. either <laughs> well, way, you're, you're going to find out for sure. You and Debbie. Either way, they All made right. it home. All right. Speaking of turkey breast and turkeys. Turkeys. As you all know, we had a banquet scheduled in August, and we were a day out, mm -hmm. you know, of having that banquet, and COVID got where it got, and we had to cancel it. Mm -hmm. And we literally, if we'd have gone one more day, we would have owed for food and, and the cook and all that, because the banquet was on Friday, and we were going to do the prep on Thursday, and we canceled on on Wednesday. So, um, and we thought we would reschedule. We said we were going to reschedule. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are, you know, mid October. In the last few weeks, COVID hasn't really given us much of a break. Um, people now are out west hunting mm -hmm. and travel, and mm -hmm. October brings a lot of things. So, um, we've made the decision not to. Ha we can't have it this year. Okay. We can't yeah. have it this year. What we are going to do, because I've got a house full of merchandise that would be at the banquet, at mm -hmm. the raffles and the auctions, and um, for our sponsors, we're going to have a sponsors only drawing. Okay. Good. Okay. At the banquet, we would have had six, six banquet guns there of different kinds for raffles and auctions and packages and you know how it goes. Mm -hmm. So we took all six guns, made six categories, and we took all the merchandise that would have been on the silent auction and live auction, all that, and we paired them together with all those six guns. We're going to have six drawings, okay. sponsors only, the ones who bought tables and sponsorships. We're going to have a drawing one through six with the gun of the year, which is a Benelli, at the end. And then they're going to not only get those guns, but the merchandise that we broke up, and it's all mixed up value-wise, so it's it's a pretty good deal for to try to take take care of our sponsors who hung in there and yes. And now for anybody who wants their money back, we're going to give them their money back. For the ones who just bought memberships only, we're going to have a memberships only drawing, mm -hmm. and we're going to draw for a two hundred fifty dollar gift card to Southern Outdoor Sports in in Dothan. So nobody's really a loser. If you if the ones who bought meal tickets want to come next year, we're going to apply that. If they want a refund, we're going to apply that. And so we're going to try to take care of everybody. The only thing people missed out on was the food yeah. and then being able to play in the games and the raffles and stuff. And, and that's a great way to, to do now, it with Plan B. Another thing real quick, we, we bought 
I don't know, a hundred, I think a hundred shirts for the banquet. Oh, cool. And we were going to... Bay County Longbeards. We were going to have, you know, we we're going to sell them at the banquet and try to... Now I got a box of over a hundred shirts that we're going to try to sell. They're twenty dollars a piece and you can get in touch with me or I'll have more on it later, but we're going to try to move these shirts just to get our money back or else I'm going to hold them. We're going to hold them yeah. until next year if I don't sell them. But if anybody wants one, I'll be glad to sell them one. And for our state chapter, we're going to have a gun calendar fundraiser. And we'll have some pictures of that we can show you. The state chapter, we have put a calendar together for 22. And we're going to give away 52 guns over the course of the year, one a week. One a week. Okay. The calendars are fifty dollars, but there's a drawing is is on the day of the one of the lotto games. It's on a Wednesday. Okay. And whatever the lotto numbers are for that, I think it's a pick three or whatever you call it. it we're going to have one through a thousand. Okay. And then, so you can win more than once. Yeah, you can. There's, you don't get disqualified. And they're pretty caliber uh, calendars with professional photographers, and um, we're going to be selling those. And there's a various ways to, to get a calendar. They're good for Christmas gifts and everything else, but you also have a chance. And I, I'm also going to provide the list of the guns. And cool. a gun a gun a week is going to be given away for 52 weeks. And that's a that's a good chance. Like I say, you win more than more. And it's than all just <laughs> fundraising and trying to recoup from where we've been. That's great, and also uh, that's similar to what Crime Shopper doing uh, on their monthly. Uh, they, they've got month. one going too, right? That's that's a good setup now. Good way to fund fundraise. Well, we about to wrap it up. It went quick. What, what, you going to Cedar Key tomorrow, right? So I'm getting in the car tomorrow to go to Cedar Key for just some family visitation for a couple of days. Okay, well, you need to get home and get some rest. And uh, I, I love hearing your stories, though. <laughs> Thank you all for watching Panhandle Outdoors, Ken. Thanks for coming on, buddy. You're welcome. Do something good today for your fellow man, and God bless. Have a good day. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.